What does it mean to communicate? Does it mean having someone understand your intentions, or is it something as simple as sharing your thoughts with the only expectation of the other person listening? In Slice of Life anime, characters speaking to one another is often both the climax and the crux of the series. Rumors spread and cause trouble, one person's insecurities infect another, and misunderstandings cause rifts in relationships. Language is complicated, after all. What we say isn't always what we think. That's why it's both relatable and frustrating to see a character unable to express their true intentions. Because we've all had moments where we couldn't say what we truly wanted to at some point. But that's the biggest issue with communicating. It's easy in theory, but complicated in practice. Something as simple and widely used as language still fails us, especially in adolescence where miscommunication is more prevalent because you don't have the proper language or experience to articulate your thoughts. But no matter how many times they see the same situations play out, anime fans are constantly drawn back to the simple complexities of language in their favorite slice of life series. And no series embodies this as simply as Kimi ni Todoke. So Wako isn't a psychic, or the girl from Toshio Sato's The Ring. But that doesn't keep kids at school from calling her Sadako. Not that her hairstyle or unintentional lurking do anything to help her image. The Wako is just a quiet girl, trying her very best to make her school experience a fun and memorable one. And the only way she can connect with classmates is by continuing to feed into the idea that she might be a ghost. But when a new person enters her life unknown to the rumors that follow her, Sawako makes a real connection for the first time, slowly opening up a path that was never open to her before, the path to true connection. From there, she finds herself speaking up in class, making friends, and ever so slowly changing how others perceive her. Each step being paved by the kindness of the boy she admires, Shota Kasehaya. His interactions with her make her understand what it means to be close with other people. Even Sawako's friendships with Chizu and Yano grow organically with Kasehaya's help and that the girls already know Sowako as Sadako, but as they learn more about her and the girl beneath the ghostly exterior, they realize how caring and lonely she really is. And as they grow closer, with the threat of rumors looming over them, Sowako is able to find a way to get across her true feelings for them as friends. Soon she realizes that the way she interacts with Kazahaya isn't the same as her friends or classmates. There's a certain way he looks and talks to her that makes her feel seen. It's in the way he takes the time to speak with her, praise her, and encourage her to keep trying. It's in the patience they have with one another to allow the other to say what they need to. It's this simple act of attention that makes it impossible for others to convince her her feelings are anything but love. The slow build of Sawako's relationships as she comes into herself is the true beauty of the series, seen in the small but notable acts that help her feel more comfortable expressing how she feels. Her learning to kick a ball, share a gift, or laugh with a friend are all simple events yet undeniably impactful for Sawako's character. It's in the delicate expressions that are coaxed out of Sawako as she feels more comfortable being herself, and in the quiet gazes of her friends as they see her flourish. Each of these moments illustrated by Kuruho Shiina, who brings a familiar shoujo flair mixed with a delicate art style that makes each of her characters' beauty shine. The anime recaptures the essence of each character's most memorable expressions, but also takes it a step further by bringing color and landscapes into the picture, utilizing them in harmony with the feeling of a scene, which comes as no surprise since the director, Hiro Kaburagi, and production IG have tended to favor these expressive backgrounds in many of their other series as well. In Kimi ni Sudoke, some moments are expanded from the ground upward, turning simple pathways and school gardens into vast expanses of field and sky, with other moments specifically between Suwako and Kazahaya simply washed in warm golden or pink light. The spaces that Suwako occupies alone are jagged, distressing, and sometimes dark. But when she's with Kazahaya, they are transported to sparkling endless galaxies, and even dreary bathrooms are bathed in gentle light from a nearby window when Suwako, Chizu, and Yano are together. Unfortunately for many fans, the Netflix drama fails to capture the same essence of the characters that the manga and anime does, particularly with the portrayal of Sawako that director Naota Kumazawa went with for the series, and how the actress Sara Minami portrayed only one aspect of Sawako's personality when she has so much more humor and joy in previous adaptations. However, it does still utilize spacing and framing to emphasize the relationships between characters and the quiet stillness of Sawako's moments alone, like the distance between Kurumi and Sawako in this scene, or this quiet contemplative moment of Sawako feeling alone in this scene. Each adding, though more subtly, their part in emphasizing the simplistic beauty of the classic shoujo title. 
The series as a whole makes the use of its characters to really emphasize how miscommunication affects each of their emotions, bringing a vibrancy to these simple situations that make the mostly mundane life of these students look desirable. Even at times when the miscommunications are frustratingly simple, you can't help but be swept up in the wordless emotions of a moment, in the airy intangible wisps and sparkles that float through a scene, the golden light that floods a precious moment, or the quiet intimacy of two people who understand one another. You can't help but be swept away by the art of miscommunication. Kimi Nits Doke isn't a series that does anything groundbreaking. It doesn't veer away from idealism or the simple approach to romance at the heart of most slice of life series. Instead, it's firmly placed in one of the most popular settings in all of anime and manga, a Japanese high school. It's not even the first to reference a lead character who resembles a ghost. But the success of the series, the reason it's received a two season anime, a live movie, and a full length drama adaptation is because of one simple thing. It's reached people. Kimi Nitsudoke isn't a shout into society to notice the quiet girl because she deserves to be looked at just for her looks. It's a quiet answer to the question, what would happen if you were able to reach just one other person with your words? Sawako so tries and fails to tell people how she feels throughout the series, and Kazahaya's presence and later the presence of her friends helps to give her courage to keep trying, reminding us all to try to express our thoughts even if our words fall short even when the thoughts we want to express are complicated, just keep trying until we're able to get our message from one person to the other, from me to you. I didn't even watch Kimi no Tadoke as a teenager like most other shoujo series uh, I had growing up. I only recently learned about it a few years ago when I was well into my 20s. And honestly, I didn't even expect for it to strike a chord with me because at the surface it just seemed like your regular stock high school romance series. But the more I watched of it, the more I found myself relating to and loving Sawako as a character, especially the way she stumbled through misunderstandings and the way she struggled with interpersonal relationships, something that I, as I've expressed in other videos, also struggle with. Sawako's perseverance and personal growth are encouraging and deeply satisfying to me. Coming out before many other series that also use a quiet or awkward girl at its center and a kind boy who comes in to help her, it is an early example of why these types of shows are so popular. Even if it's not a story that does anything new or special, its simplicity still speaks to me and others in a quiet and reassuring way. That even if what I say gets misconstrued or misunderstood, there will always be someone there to at least listen. There will always be someone there patient enough to hear me out. And honestly, I think we all deserve someone like that in our lives. Hey y'all, it's Phoenix. Thank you for watching to the end of this shorter, different type of video. I recently just watched and read through all the different variations of Kimi Nits Doke, which is a series that like captivated me only a couple years ago when I found out about it and like deeply fell in love with it and the main character Sawako. And I just wanted to do like a quick short little review on the series. I'm working on a much bigger video uh, going more in depth about characters like Sawako in shoujo romance series, but I just wanted to make a quick video kind of like a visual poetic love letter to Kimi Nita Doke and it's like gentle, subtle art of miscommunication in, in its storytelling in anime and in manga and even in the live drama adaptation. I might do more reviews for certain series in this way, um, especially if they're series that are, are as near and dear to me as this series is. I hope everyone had a nice drink while you were watching this. I know I did. I have matcha today, so I'm very happy. If you've seen Kimi no Tadoke, if you know about Sawako and her story, and you want to keep talking about it in the comments below, please feel free to do so. I will be also talking about it more down there as well. I just love this series so much, and I think it's just one of those subtle, simple series that still hits you in a way that it makes it unforgettable. I want to know if you guys all agree. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you guys in the next one and peace.